In an interview you only see on CBS News, two men who say Michael Jackson sexually abused them as children are opening up about their experiences. Wade Robson and James Safechuck are featured in an explosive new documentary premiering on this weekend on HBO. Both men also sued the Jackson estate, but their lawsuits were dismissed because of the statute of limitations. They are appealing, Jack, they are appealing rather. Jackson always denied any inappropriate behavior with children. Robson and Safechuck detail their relationship with Jackson in an interview with CBS This Morning co-host Gail King. A warning to viewers, some of you may find these details disturbing. Before you all met Michael Jackson, what did he mean to you? I saw the making of Thriller just instantly became obsessed. I wanted to be just like, and I dressed like him every day, and did my hair, and had my hair permed to look like him, and you know, all that stuff. I wasn't necessarily a big fan, and then when I got the commercial. Mr. Jackson? They, they the Pepsi the, commercial. Yeah, the Pepsi commercial. When you see me meet him, it's actually my first time seeing him. You know, at that point I was pretty excited, was um, otherworldly, I guess. James Safechuck and Wade Robson discussed the intimate details of their relationships with Michael Jackson. Everybody wanted to meet Michael or be with Michael. In the upcoming HBO documentary, Leaving Neverland. That's the name of Jackson's ranch, where Robson claims seven years of sexual abuse with the world-famous performer first began. I mean, this was just the most magical thing I'd ever seen. And that first night, Michael kind of took us on a little bit of a tour, and he said to me and my sister, you can stay in one of the guest rooms or, or you can stay in here with me if you want. And my reaction was, of course I want to stay with you. We had one more night that way that myself and my family were going to leave and go on another kind of vacation to the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. I was devastated to leave Michael. Michael was devastated for me to leave. He actually sobbed. So you got to stay. So I got to stay. And so it was just Michael and I in Neverland for the next week. And your parents allowed that? My parents allowed that. Mm -hmm. Within either the first or second night of Michael and I being alone at Neverland, the night started changing. One of the ways I remember it starting is, um, you know, Michael just sort of starting to touch my legs and touch my crotch over my pants. It progressed to him performing oral sex on me, him showing me how to perform oral sex on him. Did it scare you? Did you think it was wrong? A couple days prior to, to, to the abuse starting, he started touching me, just in the sense of like, hand on my leg, lots of hugs, kissing my forehead, rubbing my hand. So there had been this kind of development of physical closeness that was happening already that felt like a father, it just felt amazing. As Michael started doing these sexual acts, he started talking to me about God brought us together. We love each other and this is we how we- love each other. We love each we. other. And this is how we show each other our love. James, you, you're nodding in agreement to what he's saying. Tell me what happened to you. He introduced me to masturbation. He said I taught him how to French kiss. Um, and then it moves on to oral sex. But are it's are not, you frightened or thinking this is weird or wrong? No, no, it's in the context of a, a loving, close relationship. And there's no alarm bells going off in your head or, or any thoughts like that. Really, it's just, I love this person and, and uh, th we're trying to make each other happy. He said, oh, I was his first, but even as a kid, you don't even know what that means. So your lovers and your best friends. What does that mean, James? You're in a relationship and you're lovers. You're a little boy. Right. And he's a, he's a 30 something man and you're a little boy. Because at that age, how do you even know what that means? You, you don't. You just feel really connected to someone and you just love them intensely. The public in general thinks it's violent, that it's very painful, but what you're describing is totally the opposite of that. I mean, he didn't beat me, he didn't, you know, he never said mean things to me. Um, it was all, we love each other. In spite of what they're claiming today, in 1993, both Robson and Safechuck denied being molested by Jackson when allegations were brought by another boy, Jordan Chandler. That case settled out of court. You all both tell a very descriptive story about, you know, sexual activity with Michael Jackson, yet when you were asked to testify in 2005, 
And, and Wade, you did. You got on the stand and you testified in his behalf and vehemently denied that any sexual activity had taken place. Yes. Why did you do that? The training, Michael's training of me to testify began the first night that he started abusing me. He started telling me that if anybody else ever finds out, we'll both go to jail. Both of our lives will be over. The 2005 criminal trial of Michael Jackson centered on molestation charges brought by a child cancer survivor named Gavin Arvizo. Court testimony shows that from the stand, Wade Robson denied ever kissing, showering, or even cuddling with Jackson. You know, they credit your testimony in part for Michael's acquittal. You know, you were called really a star witness. You, you withstood a blistering cross-examination, yeah. and he was acquitted. On some level, do you feel guilty about that now? Do you think about that? Yeah, I do think about that. I have, and I do. I wish that I was ready. I wish that I could have helped Gavin Arvizo receive some justice and some validation for what happened to him. That was just like what happened to me and just like what happened to James. And I wish that I could have played a role in, at that point, stopping Michael mm -hmm. from abusing however many other kids he did after that. Do you think that there are others out there? I do think there are others out yeah. there. Um, but, but I also don't expect them to just come out now that we're coming out. It's such a difficult thing to do to come out. You, you have to do it when you're ready. We can't change what happened to us. It happened. It's done. But what can we do with it now? How can we provide comfort for other survivors? That's what right. this is about. And Michael just happens to be the guy, the abuser, in this child sexual abuse story. Well, CBS This Morning co-host Gail King joins us now on the set. Gail, their story is heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, it's heartbreaking and disturbing. I watched really both parts was. back to back over a month ago, actually, then watched it again right before the interview because I started taking notes. And I woke up really just haunted and very disturbed by what I had yeah. seen. It, I think it's important to emphasize that the Jackson family believes these two are admitted liars, that they're opportunists, that they're trying to exploit Michael Jackson in death mm -hmm. and exploit the legacy. But what they have to, the story they tell is very, very chilling. Um, you know, we, in your piece, you point out that they had been given an opportunity to talk about this before, yeah. and they denied that there was any yes. abuse at all. Why yes. are they talking about it now? Well, I mean, I think that they said you have to come to it in your own time, and they weren't ready to talk about it then. And also, Anne-Marie, for a long time, they didn't even think of it as abuse, yeah. because Michael, they say, had trained them so well to think we love each other. This is how people show love. And it's always, we will get in trouble. We will, this is our special thing. Yeah. So when you're a little kid, you feel that you're complicit in that. So for many years, they didn't know that it was abuse. It's only be, when they became adults, actually, and really started having their own children. And the biggest reason why they didn't tell is because they wanted to protect him. Yeah. This is somebody that you're in love with, who you mm -hmm. care about. And so they lied to their parents, they lied on the stand, and said, for them, they thought, if we didn't lie, it's going to hurt him and ultimately hurt, hurt us. So when you listen to the story the way that they tell it, you can see why with a little child's brain, even though they're grown, Wade was 22, um, he was 11 the first time and 22 the second time, you're now a grown up, you still have deep feelings for him. Um, just out of curiosity, you, you know, they're all being told, according to them, that this is a special relationship that they're having with Michael Jackson. And they're Jackson. the only ones. And they're the only ones. But then, you know, later on, there were other people who come forward with accusations. And so they're hearing that other people may have been in an alleged special relationship. Mm -hmm. Did that have an impact on them? I mean, how did they react when they learned that? Well, I mean, I, I don't think they've had any reaction to that because the only people who have come forward publicly were Jordan Chandler, mm -hmm. and that case was settled. And um, the uh, Grant Avizio, where they had the trial in 2005, you haven't heard the names really. There's been speculation, yeah. but there hasn't been anyone else who has actually come forward and said, "This is what happened to me." It's going to be very interesting after this document, after this doc airs on Sunday and Monday on HBO, to see what kind of reaction they get from it. But they're also afraid. Listen, they know that people don't believe them. Mm -hmm. They know that they are going to get a lot of hate mm -hmm. because the Jackson fans and the Jackson family are very strong, and, and they are prepared for that. They just feel at this point in time, 
it was time to tell their story. Why do they feel at this point in time is the right time to tell their story? And what is it about this documentary that's different? Because we've reported on the sexual abuse allegations of Michael Jackson. Uh, but after this documentary, how do you think <clears throat> all that reporting? What to me, Vlad, was different was the, the detail. The detail in the stories that they tell. And I have to say, Dan Reed has done amazing storytelling, how he sets up the process so you get to meet them, you get to see how they became en enamored with Michael Jackson, you get to see how the, the I keep calling them boys are not boys, how Wade and James say that even their families were lured and were groomed. Because you're thinking, as a mother, Anne Marie Green, mm -hmm. how in the world would you allow your young son to stay with a grown man. I don't care who he was or how famous for a he week. was. Yeah, for a week. But when but, you interviewed the Jacksons, um, you know, they said, look, this it's was not normal true. to us. They said that he would have uh, sleepover slumber parties with a lot of different children, that Michael was very caring. You know, the, the his nephew said that. His nephew, Taj, who I thought was very strong, yeah. who also admitted that he was a sexual abuse survivor himself. He said he had been at the sleepovers too, but he was never there when those two were there mm -hmm. because this happened, you know, when they were seven and 10 so he was not there during that time you know I'm not trying to say that every time a young person was at Michael Jackson's house they were abused I'm not saying that I'm only talking about these two boys and what these two boys can tell in their story mm -hmm. they tell stories of several locks on the bedroom door they talk about having drills that when somebody wow. was coming that you have to get dressed that bells would go off if somebody entered a hallway so you know they would he's, he's they talk about having practice drills to get dressed in case somebody came that that's what I, that's, so that's a level of detail yeah but when you say what makes it different is that it's so detailed and some of the sexual acts are so explicit that you know a couple times I said let me just turn it off for a second wow. it was literally stomach turning to me mm -hmm. and and again the Jacksons insist Wade in particular because Wade had a relationship, they said Wade used to date one of the Jackson girls, and one of um, Jackie's daughter. Wade said yes, that that was true. He's not denying any of that. Wade, they say, is an opportunist who continued to stay with the Jackson family, but uh, have contact with them. But I talked to a child psychologist who specializes in trauma victims, and says that's not unusual. You think that you have a relationship with this person. You want to be near this person. You know, Wade admits Michael Jackson changed his life. He is a brilliant, amazing dancer. He had talent, but certainly learning from Michael Jackson doesn't hurt you. Right. So right. both things, in his opinion, are true. He changed my life, the creativity that I have. He was loving and kind, but he also sexually abused me from the time I was 7 to 14, and he says both things are true. Wow. Mm. Uh, thank you for stopping by yeah. and sharing uh, your reporting and your reaction. And I think it's going to be when this documentary airs, it'll be really interesting to see how the rest of the public. Yeah, it'll be to interesting it. to have a conversation next Monday and Tuesday to see what the reaction for is sure. to Definitely. it. For sure. Definitely. Well, a programming note, Anne Marie and I will be speaking with director and producer of Leaving Neverland, Dan Reed, tomorrow morning in the 10 a.m. hour on CBSN.